My name is Mathieu Fazani. Uh, I'm in charge of the Media Asset Management Solutions. And um, I'm sure that you will love my presentation, not only because I will talk about IMF, CMAF, server-side insertion, high, high dynamic range, but probably more because I'm the uh, last presentation between you and the food and drinks. Anyway, that's already quite good. So we are, we are all here today because we work in a great and uh, amazing industry, which is the media and entertainment industry. Um, this is great, but it's also a crazy industry, which keeps asking for more and more content to be created all the time, because there is a demand for it. That's good, but that's also a challenge for you, for you who need to create content, for you who need to enhance it, create new versions all the time, and for you who need to deliver the final product to your end users. So what we do at Dalet is actually innovating all the time to deliver and invent some solutions to help you um, to manage assets at scale and be able to uh, be efficient in what you do, to be able to support all these, these, these trends and the ability to create new content over time. So our solutions are based on three main pillars. The first one is enterprise content management. It's key to be able to um, reference any type of asset in a system audio, video, and also more complex objects, bundle, track stacks, IMF um, assets. And once you have this data model, which is flexible and dynamic, then you want to make it available um, to the outside through very uh, user-intuitive tools that could be Dalet tools. Um, that could also be through a very granular state-of-the-art API service. And finally, through third-party tools like um, NLE, Adobe tools, or Avid tools. Once you have this in place, the second pillar is the framework that allows you to create, prepare the programs, prepare all the components, and make it ready for distribution. For this, we've built some specific objects that are meant to simplify the user experience, to aggregate components here and to stack them into track stack that will create the version that you need to deliver. Um, some tools to be able to define the inserts that you need when you will broadcast the content. And then once you have all those tools, you want to automate the processes as much as you can. So you can define sophisticated workflows that will combine a mix of system tasks and user tasks. On the back end, of course, what we manage is actually media, video, and audio. And we are leveraging our advanced media processing engine to do advanced rendering, um, processing SDR, HDR content, generating proxies, doing splicing, stitching, rendering. All those operations can be processed um, natively by, by Galaxy. And finally, as part of those complex processes, we aggregate data to understand a bit more where the bottlenecks are and how you can improve even more the efficiencies of your workflow. The latest uh, pillar of our solutions are uh, very strong enterprise media supply chain orchestration. The idea here is really to connect different silos that are um, standalone systems that cannot communicate well. And here the idea is to extract and be aware of what's happening inside each silo and use this information to trigger and manage complex workflows where you can aggregate this data and use it to do um, um, and process rich assets that combine metadata from different systems. So basically what we do is we combine all those pillars and we create platforms to help you to manage content. So this year at NAB, we are launching Dalet Galaxy 5, as you know. And I would like to spend some time just to insist on three aspects of Galaxy 5, which are important for media asset management workflows. The first one is experiencing a full web-based experience and uh, exposing a number of tools that are all web-based. This will start from the ingest up to the playout and the distribution. So you can see all here, um, it's uh, just an extract of some of the modules that you find in Galaxy 5. And I will show you some of the tools that we are introducing this year at NAB. So the first one, this one, is actually the ability to control recordings. If you need to ingest live feeds, SDI, IP, um, control router, you can do it now from the web user interface that's included into Dalet Web Space. In the meantime, you also want to import files from camcorders, any type of camcorder, or do bulk ingest. And you can also open a web user interface that's called Kiosk where you can select the camcorder device. You will see all the clips. You select the ones that you want to import. You add some metadata, and it will trigger a workflow to automatically process all the clips and import them into your asset management system. 
when you go through the workflow, of course, you want to design, you want to manage, you want to monitor workflows. Again, just need the web user interface to do it from anywhere on, on, at home or, or, or at, your, um, at, at the office. So you can do all the design, all those different steps very easily. As part of those workflows, you will have a mix of system tasks and automated tasks, and uh, user tasks, sorry. If you are a regular user, you just want something simple and straightforward. I have my list of tasks. I want to claim one task. I want to start it. It will open the right tool on the right asset. I will complete the task. I'm done. That's the Kanban view. If you are a manager, you want to see a full list of um, tasks that are pending for all the teams that I'm managing. I want to filter them. I want to change the priority. Um, I want to search for them. And I need this type of tool with the backlog view. So you have those two types of view to efficiently manage tasks which are part of BPM workflows. When you are creating uh, promos, when you need a um, high level of interaction between the users and between um, um, the, the teams themselves, we have introduced also um, a chat uh, mechanisms and a chat module inside WebSpace. You can easily uh, exchange any type of asset. You drag and drop a link. You exchange an image. You exchange a storyboard. And you can easily uh, build something and add creativity without having to worry about communicating and improving the communication between the team. At NAB also this year, we're introducing, and I will come back to it um, in a few minutes, um, the uh, native support of IMF. As part of that, we are introducing a, a timeline editor in WebSpace where you can load a CPL, and it will use all the proxies that have been generated for each track file. You play, and you will see dynamically um, the version that has been created on using the video track files, the audio track file, and the subtitle track files. Now we uh, come to the uh, end of the workflow, which is packaging all those different components. You need to create a Cable Labs package for VOD. You need to create an IMF package. And you can easily drag and drop. And you have all those containers, which are predefined. You drag and drop the asset, or you will populate the container automatically via a BPM workflow. And then this will flow inside the BPM workflow. And we, uh, Raul talked about it also before. Is It's not only um, file-based operations, but also real-time operations that can be managed from a web user interface. So that was the first thing that I wanted to uh, share with you um, this year at NAB. The second topic is component-based workflows. So I want to do some education first and share uh, my view on where you should go, when, where we should, why you should think about going, moving forward with component-based workflows. So let me take one simple example. Typical workflow is you have video, audio, that combine into one file, typically an MXF or P1F file. And what you start doing on this is running processes. You want to generate a proxy. You want to run a QC. You will attach metadata to this package itself. You don't care about what is inside this package. You care about the container itself. Then you start creating new versions of it. And again, you will uh, aggregate captions, audio, video, put some, meta on, some metadata on it. And what you realize is that actually the content itself, the components inside the container, are al always more or less the same. So you are duplicating a lot the content. You are duplicating the processes to generate proxies to do QCs on them. And at some stage, maybe if there is an issue in a file, a frame that you need to replace, it's not only one package that you need to change. It's actually all the packages. So you've, you've lost uh, a lot of efficiency in your workflows when it comes to manage all those different versions. So there is another approach, which is to go one level down in the process. And instead of looking at the containers, you extract only the components themselves, the video on one side, the audio on one side, and the captions. And then what you do is you will attach an ID, um, ID to those different components and some associated metadata. And each component will become something that you can use in your system by adding, on top of that, some manifests, EDLs, track stacks, CPL compositions. Those objects are small, easy to use, and they only give you the pointers and how to assemble those different components together. Once you have this, first you will store only once, and you will use many times the components. And then you can start to um, specialize the processes that you will run on those different components. So on the video, you want to do proxy generation only once. You want to run a QC specialized for the video. And you want to also leverage cognitive services to do some computer vision, 
detect the faces, um, do some OCR, etc. For the audio, you will run some similar processes, uh, maybe speech to text, audio QC, and for captions, you want to do uh, natural language processing. So you are doing something very specific, and you um, prevent media duplication, you prevent process duplication, and you facilitate the distribution. So how does that work when you need to scale um, and when you have a thousand millions of components? You will ask some questions like, OK, um, I have a version. I want to know actually which components are used in the version. I want to know that relationship easily. Um, then I want to archive some of the components to uh, an S3 bucket. But I don't know if this component is actually used in a version or not. And then I want to optimize the delivery of the components to my partners. So how do I know if I've, I have already sent a, this specific component to my partner? So to achieve component-based workflows at scale, you need an efficient MAM and an orchestration layer. First, because you need to abstract the complexity. What you need to do is actually being able to reference the assets, being able to model the relationships, and expose the information in an easy way for all the users. Then once you have this and all the linking mechanisms between the assets, you can automate processes because the manifests, the compositions, they are easy to process, and you can leverage on that to automate processes. And finally, the cherry on the cake is you can enrich automatically the individual assets, putting more metadata on it, predict some ETAs, because you will have some complex workflow with components coming from different places, and you are not sure how much time it will take to complete the workflow itself. So one example and one application of component-based workflows is IMF. Um, if you have to do global B2B distribution, and you need to deliver hundreds of versions, there is a lot of content which is actually the same. It's only packaging and, and reusing the same components. IMF is a standard from the SEMTI, which has been designed based on the concept of component-based workflows. And what we do this year at NAB is introducing Galaxy 5 that supports natively um, IMF, the data model itself, and we have plug-and-play IMF workflows. So let's see a, a, a video that shows what we've just implemented. Dalek Galaxy 5 introduces plug-and-play IMF workflows, allowing the ingest of IMF packages, the referencing of IMF assets in a central repository for immediate search and preview, the visualization of relationships between the components, the automatic creation of new compositions, and the generation of new IMF packages for delivery. IMF components are exposed in a unique, intuitive, and easy-to-manage web user interface, while workflow orchestration can automate sophisticated processing in the background. Let's go through a typical IMF workflow. An original version has been created by a mastering tool and is delivered to Dalek Galaxy 5 as an IMP, in other words, an IMF package. The contents of the IMF package is referenced in the MEM, and IMF assets appear in Dalek web space, including IMF track files, composition playlists, output profile lists, a media pack title representing the IMP, a bundle title which will link all the versions belonging to the same title or episode. Proxies are automatically generated for each individual track file, allowing immediate browsing from anywhere. Editorial and technical metadata for each asset are imported, allowing users to include this information in their search queries. We can also see the track file deceptors, CPL, OPL, and IMP metadata. For CPLs holding IDR or ISAN IDs, metadata from these global registries can be seen by the user such as the director, actors, release date, etc. Media pack titles allow you to track how assets have been delivered. As you can see here, this IMP contains one video track file, two audio track files, and one CPL. Let's imagine now that we receive an improvement of the OV as a new IMP, which contains two subtitles with a composition playlist referencing them. As the new CPL refers to the same title via its IDER title ID, those new assets get linked to the original bundle. Let's see how this looks like in the bundle. The bundle design is based on componentized workflows, where you find the media components in the Media tab, the Composition Playlist in the Production tab, renderings of the composition in the Versions tab, and deliveries of the assets in the Packages tab. In the Media tab, assets can be previewed individually and sorted by type. In the Production tab, we can see our two compositions, the original version and the improvement. Let's open the original version. The timeline loads the CPL. I can preview the composition using the generated proxies, see the markers, and select the audio track to listen to. Let's see the improved OV. As you can see, we have two additional subtitle tracks. I can select either one to preview. In the meantime, a supplemental package has been delivered. 
This package contains replacement frames for the German version. As you can see, the CPL contains an insert in the video track. The combination of those replacement frames and of the CPL allows you to define a new version, saving storage, computing, and transport. We can render the IMF composition so that we can send a flattened file with the subtitles and watermark burnt in. This would be the final on-air master, like an AS11 or HLS package. In this case, we are using the Dalit Amberfin transcoding farm, but other systems can be triggered by Dalit to process the content. The rendered composition will appear in the versions tab and stays linked inside the bundle. We can also generate a new IMF package from the CPL. All the components used in the CPL will be inserted in the output package. Finally, we will generate a new package, which we will combine different components into a new composition. If we want to manually create a new IMF package and export some individual assets to a partner, we can create a new IMF package and link our various track files together by dragging and dropping our assets from the bundle editor to the package. This enables organizations to repurpose their archived content as IMF packages. When our package is complete and all the elements are there, we initiate a migration policy to create an IMF package. This will compute the checksums if required create the asset map and the PKL files, and export the package to any desired destination, such as an FTP server, AWS3 buckets, and Azure Blob storage. Of course, such a process can also be automated via the Dalit workflow engine. Finally, it is key to understand how components are interconnected. Using the Dalit context map, anyone can see at a glance the contextual relationships between our IMF assets. When we focus on a single CPL, we can see from which IMP it has been delivered that it is associated to some IDR or ISAN IDs, that it uses a number of individual track files, and that it is part of a larger bundle. Let's focus on the bundle. This shows us all track files belonging to the same title and how each CPL uses them. Dalit Galaxy 5 delivers plug-and-play IMF workflows, allowing any organization to easily manage domestic and international versioning at scale using the powerful new SMPTE standard, IMF. So IMF is actually just one possible application of component-based workflows. Um, if you think about it, so that's the initial step of the workflow where you do all the mastering and the versioning. But think about all the multi-platform distribution and how you will take this original um, source content and send it to all the different outlets, like to um, the TV liner um, playout, to the different VOD platforms, OTT platforms. And think about all the things that are happening right now in the industry. Um, object, um, object based media. You want to give to the user different types of objects on demand based on some metadata generated by the audience, generated by cognitive services on the components themselves. Um, if you think about CMAF, CMAF is really about isolating the video, the audio, and the subtitles, and that you can recombine them on the fly when needed. Um, IMF, um, DCP for the, digital, for the um, digital cinemas, digital theaters, also about using component workflows. So this model is really something that is happening in the, in the, in the industry and is not limited only to a B2B um, distribution workflow. Um, the last topic I want to talk this afternoon is media processing. Um, so as you know, in the back end, we leverage um, different um, application servers to process the media, and we, ha we have some news at NAB. So first of all, as you know, uh, all the, um, the processing engine is, supports natively S3 buckets. So you can stream from S3 buckets. You can render a transcode from and to S3 buckets. On top of that, we are introducing elasticity so that automatically when we reach a level of jobs which are queued, we can automatically spin up new processes um, to process the, uh, the jobs that are pending. And we are also enabling cloud services to process the media as part of this cloud-native orchestrated pipeline. We are ready for the next generation of formats. Uh, we are introducing with Dalet Amberfin SDR to HDR and HDR to SDR conversions from PQ to SDR or PQ or hybrid log gamma to SDR and the opposite way. And we look, we use high quality lookup table to do this conversion. We also support natively IMF in the engine to generate IMF packages simple and complex to be able to render composition simple and complex. And we also support the IMF ProRes, the RDD45 track files, as well as IMSC1. So we can leverage this backend to automatically process IMF track files. Security and analytics is also key for us. So as part of the media processing pipeline, we've improved our integration with Nielsen and NextGuard solutions, which do different types of watermarking techniques. And finally, if you want to know more, there are also additional stuff that you can see on our booth. So I again invite you um, to come to the booth, and we can do a specific demo on the media processing pipeline.